videos that we've done so far on entity framework we started talking about ORMs the basic idea of uh, what ORMs are then we went into a CRUD operation on a single table using entity framework we talked about validations we went into a one-to-many relationship using entity framework in this video what we're going to do is we're going to do a many-to-many -many relationship with uh, the entity framework and uh, the example we're going to take is that of a user role and a user role a table that's a classic many-to-many -many relationship that exists in a lot of systems out there so a user can be assigned to multiple roles a role can have multiple users assigned to it it's a classic many-to-many -many relationship and what we're going to do here is we're going to start by creating the tables that we require so we're going to go ahead and create the user table first and it's going to have a user ID which is going to be the primary key we are going to auto increment that so let's go ahead and turn the is identity to true and it's going to have a username which is going to be an nware care of 150 and maybe a first name it's also an nware care of 150 and a last name so that's my user table i'm going to go ahead and save this call it users we're also going to need a roles table uh, so we're going to create a role id it's going to be an integer turn the identity specification of this to true turn it into a primary key a role the role table is going to have a role name it's going to be an nware care of 150 and maybe a role description it's also going to be an nware care of 150 so we have a user table and now we have a roles table and now we're going to do a user role table so user role table is going to establish a many to many relationship between user and role so we're going to throw in the user id and a role id and because both of these combined need to have uh, a unique value so we're going to turn them into a composite key and the best way to do that is the easiest way to do that is to do a shift and uh, select both these columns and go ahead and mark it as a primary key right so we have a composite key between user id and role id and this table is not going to have anything else so i'm just going to go ahead and call it user roles and it's the table that brings uh, the user and role table into a many-to-many -many relationship and we're going to draw the relationship using a simple diagram we're going to take users roles and user roles and we're going to throw it here and we're going to connect uh, we're going to bring users on this side user roles at the center and roles on this side and we're going to draw a one-to-many relationship between the user and user role using the user id and we're going to draw a one-to-many relationship between role and user role using the role id and uh, let's go ahead and save this go ahead and make the changes to the table and we don't require this diagram anymore so i'm going to go ahead and remove it so we have it uh, a many to many relationship in the database is already there we're going to go ahead and update our model here i removed the car and the car detail uh, business entities from the previous example because we don't need them right now we're just going to focus on the user role and user role stable and we're going to click finish so notice when i click finish what entity framework does for me is that it does not create an entity of uh, the user role table right and the reason why it does not do that is because it realizes that it's a table which we are using only for the purposes of creating a many to many relationship so there is no reason why i should be accessing it directly right there's absolutely no reason why we should be accessing it directly so uh, let's go ahead and start writing some code uh, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to start creating a user in the database and then we're going to create a couple of roles and we're going to assign uh, these roles to the user and we're going to do all this without hitting the user role table directly right so let's go ahead and start by creating a user so we're going to have a user id as so we don't need a user id we're going to have a user name and we're going to call this user user1 first name of the user is going to be user last name is going to be one 
give a comma here last name is going to be one and uh, we have a roles collection inside the user but we are not going to use it right now we're going to go ahead and create a role very very quickly and this is going to be a new role that we're going to create and we're going to be creating a role for administrators so let's call the role name administrator and a role description and we're going to leave this as anything and we're going to create another role and this one we're going to call this a user it's for a standard user and role description can be uh, something right so we have two roles and one user Right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to assign these roles to the user and the way we're going to do that is by using the roles collection inside the user object and we're going to add a role to the roles that belong to this user that we've just created and we're also going to assign the second role that we added to this user. Right. So both these roles are assigned to this user and now I'm going to go and save this user to the database. So I'm going to go ahead and say um, add this user to the database just like we did it did this in the first video and we're going to say db dot save changes and notice uh, let's quickly do a console dot a right line user and related roles saved to the database and a quick console dot read line let's run this very very quickly and uh, once we run this what effectively entity framework is doing is it's going ahead and creating a user for me in the database so if we go into the users table it has gone ahead and added a user for me if I go to the roles table just by the virtue of the fact that I already had two roles assigned to this users which were not there in the database entity framework went ahead and created these two roles in the database for me and it went ahead and assigned these two roles to the same user because I had gone ahead and assigned these two roles to the user. So even though I did not hit the user role table directly, Entity Framework is aware of the fact that it needs to hit this table and went ahead and added rows to this table, right? Now let's go ahead and see what happens if we remove associations of a role from a user. Is Entity Framework intelligent enough to realize that? And does Entity Framework remove the correct records from this table? So this time we're going to, instead of creating a new user, we're going to get a user and we're going to get a user whose username is going to be user1 right and in this case we are going to get a role from the database and we're going to get the role where the role name is equal to administrator so we have a user we have a role now we are going to say that from the roles collection of this user which is now going to contain two roles because there are two roles assigned to this user remove the administrative role that I just found in the database right and we are going to come in and change this confirmation message very very quickly administrative role removed from user1 and let's run this very very quickly and what you notice is once we go into this user role table after running this code what you notice is that it has removed the administrative role from the user role table which means it has removed the association of uh, that user with the administrative role right another quick way to add an association is instead of going through the user I could have directly gone through the role right so which means if I get the administrative role again right and if I had so if I let's say if I wanted to add the administrative role back to the user instead of going into users dot roles I could have gone the other way around and I could have said role dot users dot add this user which means I'm saying that add user one to the administrative role and it's effectively the same thing as saying assign the administrative role to the user it's the other way of looking at it so let's go ahead and quickly run this the user 1 added to 
rule right and let's go ahead and run this very very quickly and notice that even though I, this time I went through roles uh, it went ahead and added the role back to the user so it went ahead and created the association of the administrative role back with the user so that's very very straightforward many to many relationship where you have an intermediate table which is two columns very important to note that the 3D framework needs to be aware of the fact that this intermediate table is going to be used just for creating this relationship so it needs to have a composite key and it should not have uh, anything else other than these two IDs which are required to form the collection and if you do that then your uh, user uh, entity automatically gets a collection for uh, roles and roles entity automatically got a collection for the users entity and you could assign and uh, reassign users to role or roles to users using these collections so that's basically what we have a quick example of a many to many relationship with entity framework in the next video we're going to talk a little bit about inheritance uh, we're going to talk about uh, table per type inheritance then we'll go into uh, table per hierarchy inheritance and then we can go into a little bit of data services just to give you an overview of the kind of cool way to expose your uh, entity model over a risk based API. But this is all we have in this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.